Dish game review, we have a very quick sneak peek at Ghost Recon Breakpoint, the new um, offering from Ubisoft. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Game Reviews, I hope you are enjoying the series, this is not episode number two and today we're in for a little bit of treat because we get a sneak peek behind the curtain and have a look at Ghost Recon Breakpoint from Ubisoft um, which is only in its beta phase at the moment, I was lucky enough to get a beta key from Ubisoft, thank you so much and no they didn't fly me anywhere and didn't put me up in any hotel so um it will give you a flavour of what this game potentially will look like at launch. Keep in mind it is a beta or be beta, however you say it in your little world. And so, you know, some of the observations that I make during this video may be corrected before the final launch of the game. So let's go and have a wee look and see what we find. So Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint is referred to as an online tactical video shooter by, and it's been developed by Ubisoft Paris. So the main storyline is all about scale tech and this um, lovely little community that they've developed called, called Aurora. Aurora uh, is developing tech to make the world sustainable into the future. The game is set in uh, 2023, four years after Wildlands, and um, the story kind of takes place on Aurora, an island in the South Pacific. So it's close to where I am, um, and it's owned by a billionaire, an entrepreneur, and philanthropist, Jace Scale. There's some big words for you. We know how we love uh, big words. He's the founder of Scale Technology, a blue chip company. So... The island is made up of a series of biomines and include marine estuaries, wetlands, all kinds of stuff. So that's where we're going to play. That's where the map is. That's where you're going to play. Um, but there's mounting evidence that products are falling into the wrong hands. And stale, stale, sorry, stale. scale technology starts to come out under increased public scrutiny when the, com the company is implicated in an assassination of the US government officials. Whoa, that's big. Um, so uh, they go dark and of course, we it's time to spe send in spec ops to see what's going on. And of course we meet Nomad, who Nomad is our uh, ghost, re the leader of our ghost recon uh, fire team, which call themselves um, the Wolves. So that's kind of the storyline that we come to. And we have the, the standard chopper, okay, the chopper um, crash, and the whole team gets wiped out, and you are the sole survivor, and um, blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's pretty standard stuff, and um, that's kind of the background of the story for the game. So very early in the uh, gameplay, you'll make your way to Arrow 1, and you'll hook up with the home steaders um, and meet mad shoots that's him right there and um, obviously the series of missions start to roll out from there um, and we'll show you arrow one in a second to show you what it looks like so here we are in what you would term as possibly a staging area um, called era one Possibly a staging area, possibly an HQ. I've I've gone through and uh, played a number of games and had these kind of um, things, uh, these kind of staging areas in many games uh, before, including something like um, what comes to mind straight away is kind of uh, Call of Duty World War Two. But a lot, it seems to be a trendy um, thing that's happening these days with um, with a lot of games now. I've got to say, when I first came in here, I was a bit overwhelmed, underwhelmed, underwhelmed is the word, underwhelmed by it. I, I don't, I actually do not quite get what is going on here. Ubisoft have done a great job at making a great big area with very little in it. 
Again, you come with me. And, so, uh, and yeah, I don't quite get what this is about or why it exists. Possibly when the, the full game drops, there may be more to this, but it just, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to have a heck of a lot to it. Um, at least that's my opinion. Um, so we will show you what is in here. Um, you know, I suspect there's probably going to be more functionality in here, but if not, I, I really don't understand why this is in the game. So um, we're all about coming back after questing for quite a while and um, you know, being able to have a safe haven. So you've got this area where you can do some, you can join the PvP area if you like. Um, yeah, I don't know. See, the, see how many areas there are around here that just don't seem to function as anything. Very pretty, but yeah. Um, you have the shop area here, and right there, and then you have uh, factions down here, faction leader down here. And uh, yeah, potentially this is where you pick up side you heard from Samuel. Not since last week. I'm sure everything's fine. Which we fine. will do here. Bye. Last time I saw him, he was stomping through here like a goddamn hurricane. So there you go. There's a new mission here. we just picked up. There's some kind of problem. We're not sure. Our friend Samuel's missing. And then. No. So I do like I do like the fact that you can stop them and hopefully. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just don't see the need. The one thing that I do like, and we're going to have a look at that. Um, in a bit is the bivouac um, area, which is in here somewhere, but I can't remember Before where. my dad died, I remember he gave exactly me a watch. where it is. But um, I can't find it. We anywhere. will look at the bivouac uh, area. To think I left it back it's on the up phone. there. Yeah. Well, that's not good. I was in a little bit more detail so well. Do you uh, in the game you rather than in here. But just in case you want, wonder where it is, it's right here, the bivouac area. So let's cut to that now. So one of the easiest ways I've found to uh, get a bivouac area, and they're like a little uh, mini camps, is when you're running around the game you'll find these intel or information um, things lying around, um, if you can find them, there, yeah, investigate, and it will give you options on what you want to choose. Always choose the bivouac if you haven't already got it because it will give you a point on the map and it really does help uh, cut down the amount of traveling you have to do. So there it goes, it's put a little camp on the map like that. Um, so we're going to choose that in a sec. And we're going to travel over there now. Um, to get this to work you've got to deploy your bivouac. So we'll do that, you can see there's a little message there. And you get this little animation that happens. It's pretty cool. And it makes all kinds of grunting noises. You can skip that, actually you can skip that animation if you want, which I think is a really nice touch. Um, I've left it in so you can see the full, you get the full uh, experience. And so what does the bivouac area actually do? Well it's like a little chill out, relaxing area and that's where I think they could put the shop for the full version of the game. I'd like to see the shop put in here. But what it does is it gives you all these options here. So we're going to go through these one at a time um, and show you what they do. So preparations is gives you a whole heap of little boosts that you can, uh, you can use. So please click on that, Mr. Music, when you're ready. And we'll show you the options. So there's a whole lot of little boosters here, as I said. Um, and so you've got eating, hydrate, technical review. There's all kinds of stuff in here um, that give you a little bit of a boost. So we're going to actually think, eat something. Stretching increases stamina, increased accuracy, increased XP gain, etc., etc. So... And um, we're going to eat for a while, and that gives us a boost for, I think it's 60 minutes. Oh no, we're going to hydrate. There we go. We're going to have a drink. Now this is different to the drinking in the game that you do to keep up your kind of strength. So that work, that is a little buff for 60 minutes. I think that's quite a nice little thing to do. So the tactics... Yeah, I'm not sure what you do in here. It's, it's like little mini challenges, I think, for 
your your class and we will get to the classes in a bit a little bit of time and um, yeah I've got to do a little bit more investigation on that you can see you've got little tasks and all kinds of stuff that you can do here um, and of course you've got crafting and you, you pick up lots of resources as you go through the game so you can obviously craft different items in here like uh, syringes and whatnot which is pretty standard but it looks like if you look down there seems to be a, there's going to be a lot of options of what you can craft here and you can see the various things that you're going to need to, to craft here um, and what you're going to have to collect which I think is an, an, a nice little um, addition to the game um, and again put your bivouac down craft whatever you need to and um, yeah it's like you don't have to leave the game or be at it, go back to the staging area and then travel back etc so once you're done once you want to go you just break your camp um, I don't know why it asks you when do you want to leave I guess you can set a timer there and then it chucks you back into the world very nice I like it like it a lot heck of a lot a really nice addition to the game so there's lots of people these are all live players here as you can see and uh, yeah there's the you open the objectives boards from here as well there seems to be a lot of ways of doing things in this game that it's a bit like uh, windows um, you can do them in a whole lot of different ways the same thing so um, let's just run off and find a little corner and I'll talk you through some of the options there are lots and lots and lots and lots of options in this game for me possibly too many options I'm a great believer in being immersed in a game and not having to come back and spend you know half an hour to an hour doing a whole lot of things and tweaking a whole lot of things and I think this game for me has um, has the possibility of falling into that trap where it may well have far too many uh, moving parts so let's get into the menu so here is the map we'll just pull it out a little bit now we were given in the beta we're given four areas that we could go into you know, I'm not sure if this is the full map. I suspect it's not. I suspect there's more. Ooh, Austral Ocean. Um, but we're given four areas that we can go into. So one, two, three, and four. So and these areas are hu quite huge. And you know, you just zoom in, you can set a waypoint. Um, as we talked about, um, the bivouacs and how those operate will help you a lot because they become fast travel points so um, pretty standard kind of thing map looks nice I like the design not a lot to say about that you have the objectives board so you got you know PVPs um, a whole lot of areas here objectives so the objectives basically give you like little mini challenges of things to find um, like for instance here you go so investigations and you can pin these to your screen so we've already found one of these clues we need to find a second one so you can go pin and suddenly it's on your um, it's on your screen and it gives you um, little clues um, in the southeastern part of Smuggler's Cove in the wild near Dead Horses Swamp to where that clue might be so that's quite a nice little thing um, I don't mind that um, on the objectives board and there's a whole lot of things that I haven't really spent a lot of time this where your collectibles live you have weapons objectives um, and again you know there's a number of um, intel that I've picked up that I've indicated that there's for instance an AK-47 in Fenbog and um, that's something that you can go and find if you want to get that weapon so that's the objectives uh, all the missions kind of sit down in here as you can see and um, we've kind of finished that operation greenstone as far as we can move it and um, all your side missions are going to sit in here 
um, obviously that side mission that we just picked up a little while ago didn't uh, didn't drop in here for some reason so we're going to have to grab it again and again you can pin those to your uh, front screen as you like and um, yeah, battle rewards um, there's eight factions by the looks of it yeah. and there's a whole lot of stuff you can do there so objectives boards see you've got an area for the objectives boards but if I can access it through menu wide I need to come here and access it there um, loadouts and we'll get into this in a little bit the guns um, you have your skill trees so you have four different skills again we'll come back and go through those in a little bit uh, customize the look of your um, of your character do all kinds of things you can buy things you can do all kinds of stuff and um, here lobby have a look who's in the lobby you, know, you can partner up there um, I'm not sure what that's for I guess that's um, gestures yeah it's gestures I was surprised that that wasn't in the game obviously it's not in the beta and uh, then you can access the Ubisoft store and obviously your your options so a lot a lot of stuff in the um, in the menus and um, yeah pretty pretty uh, comprehensive is the word I think I'd like to use pretty comprehensive um, kind of um, amount of options that you've got now let's have a look at the gun options or the loadout options so to speak so here is the loadout screen we'll get into the guns in a second but essentially um, you have a whole lot of stuff that goes on in here so let's start over on the right hand side so this is all your different gear and you can see there's, there's various things at various different numbers and what does that mean that means the, the level of gear that you have you want to change it you can and you can see I've got a whole lot of different options to change that now you can also as you can see you can either equip it or you can dismantle it when you dismantle it it gives you it gives you gear parts and um, you also notice that there's a little green kind of line slash there and that means that there's a special ability there and with this helmet I get a stamina boost or regen speed of plus two percent pretty standard stuff to customize your um, customize your character you get you'll pick up a lot of this stuff um, as you go through the game so and uh, like rewards for doing various things and finding stuff in the game oh hang on a second so pretty straightforward and of course you can you can do all kinds of tweaking there if you want to we then get into um, the skill trees and the four abilities so let's go to the next menu and we'll come back to this so you have at the start of the game a choice of um, how you want to play the game so I've gone for sharpshooter I like a sniper and an assault rifle when I play uh, this type of game, a Ghost Recon game, so I've gone for the Sharpshooter, which um, high penetration bullets for bonus damage and muscle velocity, uh, launch a device, marks enemies in large areas, longer breath control while aiming, proficiencies and bonuses with sniper rifles and DR DMRs. Okay, um, you have the Panther, which has a cloaking, some kind of cloaking um, ability. Uh, assault now I'm not sure we will try this whether you can have more than one I suspect you possibly can yes you can so you can have these you can have these equipped you can have more than one equipped and then um, field medic so you can see if you were if you were partnering up in a um, in a group probably would best each to have these um, skills now 
One of the things that I don't like is this skill tree because it kind of it's all over the place. It's sort of connected, it's sort of not, and you can see I've kind of I've went the stealth route. But you can pretty much pick whatever you want here, depend if you have the the, the ability points. So you see some of the stuff I've picked. I've went um, uh, experience upgrade, twenty percent XP bonus. Uh, up close and perks and all that speeds the speed and agility while aiming down sight. There's some weapon perks. There's a whole lot of perks there. Um, I possibly need to start looking at these ones with the sniper classes because that's pretty much um, where I am playing the game right now. So that's the skill trees. The guns. Um, you will pick up a number of guns during um, during the game, and um, the ones you don't use, you can scrap. And uh, scrapping is pretty easy. Just select the gun. You'll see you've got a few spare guns there, and you do it the same as you did with the uh, your gear. Just use the dismantle button, and um, there you go, like that. And it will give you various things. Now, what do you? do with the various parts that you dismantle from these guns that you pull apart well you can use it to boost your existing um, your existing gun so you have to go into gunsmith and you'll see down here there are little upgrades and uh, it, these upgrades will depend on how many parts you've got and you can see that kind of under the repair con component um, and uh, Strangely enough, the, the little bars seem to move and it doesn't seem to do much, but it gives you boosts to all kinds of stuff like accuracy and damage and all that kind of stuff. What I don't like is the fact that you have to remember what these all are. You can see on the... Um, you'll see in a second, I think in the gunsmith, where you customise your weapon, you can see what they are, but nowhere else on this page can you see what these little symbols mean so it means that you have to remember these which I think they need to have a look at um, so you can change these out if you if you have the the right part for instance you can change this to a red dice dot site if you like whatever you like folding whatever um, I've got to say, I um, I played the game for four or five hours on the first day, and struggled to find any parts for this gun whatsoever, which is a bit uh, I was a bit perplexed by this. Your upgrades are here, and then also you have the option of changing the paint. So. Obviously there's not as many options here open because it's a beta but you can see you can customise your look of your gun to the way you want it to look. So that's all pretty standard um, and it's very similar to the last the last game as far as the gunsmith works like I said um, and you can see I would like a uh, to be able to get parts for this much easier now we're going to go to the shop in a minute and I'll show you where you can possibly get some additional parts for that who's in the shop today and this is probably the only reason I really need to come to the to the home base now I don't know why I would want to know anything about this but anyway I will just want to come to the shop that's basically what I'm let's I mean get here. you suited so obviously you can upgrade your weapons and um, you'll see up in the top um, right hand corner 34,135 credits that I got I get Schnell credits you get those by playing the game or scale credits you pick them up everywhere in the game so uh, you, you don't have any problem getting credits to buy stuff and um, you buy weapons you buy gear um, weapons on demand I guess they're 
kind of exclusive little weapons you can buy. You see the amp there, the MP7, that kind of stuff. Um, and again, it will tell you how this compares to what you're currently using. Um, buy cars and bikes and all kinds of stuff, you know, supplies, consumables. And this is where it kind of gets a bit muddy for me. Okay, so you can buy all these. That's pretty. St I, I sort of get that, but then it's talking. Hang on, sorry, beg your pardon. Then as you come down here, it's kind of talking about. Um, where is it? Under barrel. It seems to be there, there are specific. That's a PEQ. 15 but it doesn't really give you an indication are these for all guns is it for one gun when you buy it I, I'm not clear see that's an LMG so that's clearly an LMG that's an ASR extended mag which I'm going to buy um, but yeah it's, I, 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 what's the benefits of these compared to other grips for instance you got STFG grip versus an AFG grip and yeah it's I, I, I need to understand a little bit more about these before I actually buy these because yeah I'm, I'm using my hard end doors how does that give me a, a buff on what I've got now so yeah that's that needs some work in my opinion so another thing that was happening with this system as well. See how I can't move up? No? It will not let me move up for some reason. Of course you can change your appearance and customize as much as you like here. All kinds of stuff. Clothing and whatnot. Melee weapons. Coal banners. All kinds of stuff there that you can um, emblems. All kinds of stuff. Uh, emotes. And buy to your heart's content. So it is a pretty standard shop. You can also sell whatever you've got and make some coins. So probably sell that. I would think I'm going to sell that. Okay. And oh, didn't mean to do that. So you're using RB and LB and then RT and LT to, nego to negotiate through this. So you can see all your gear, it's pretty standard stuff. So you pick up a whole lot of stuff that I didn't even know I'd picked up. I've got no idea what half this stuff does. So. Um, I'd like them to have a button where it says you can sell or stuff that you're not going to need. But yeah, pretty standard stuff with the shop, but it's the only reason why I, can't, I would come to headquarters and I would think that there could be um, there could be a different way of doing this. You also get these little tutorials pop up and it, it will kind of teach you how to do things, which I think is quite nice. So there you go, that's a, a good look at the headquarters, staging area, whatever you would like to call it um, for Ghost Recon Breakpoint. I hope, my hope is that they do a heck of a lot more with this and I suspect they will, but yeah, I just, I, I, as I said at the start, I'm not a fan of this kind of staging area. I'd rather be immersed in the game rather than have to worry about spending a lot of time in here. I don't see the reason yet. Your bivouac serves much more purpose apart from the shop so I'd like to kind of have some areas like they did in the Far Cry games where you, when you go down to sleep there's a shop next to you or something but yeah I can understand why they put it in the game. That's a lot about the functionality of the menus etc. Here's some gameplay footage for you and um, I'm going to go through and just give you my thoughts on what I think about the pros and cons of this game. The guns are pretty solid, the gameplay is very very smooth. As you can see the environment is very uh, very nice. I love the bivouacs, I love those fast travel points that save you so much time. Um, there's plenty of weapon crates and areas and things to do to get um, new equipment 
uh, make sure that you get your credits up, you find new areas, new attachment for guns, all that kind of stuff. Plenty of that in the game for you to be going on with. There's a huge, huge map for you to explore. This is the one thing I don't like is these annoying drones. But anyway, <laughs> lots of vehicles to use. Um, you don't want to see the footage of me using vehicles, let me tell you. If you joined us on the live stream a few weeks ago, uh, a week or so ago, you would have seen my bad, really, really bad driving. <laughs> and it was exceptionally bad. Um, what I will say about the, the vehicles in this game, they seem, that their acceleration just seems to be a little bit um, too sensitive. I think they need to, tr oh, hello. They need to track, they need to tweak that a little bit. It's just, yeah, I, I found myself not having to, to accelerate much to have a vehicle being launched into into the environment and I think they just need to, to tweak that a little bit. Um, the option to pin missions to the screen you can see up in the left hand corner. You can have as much or as little as you can. In the beta there was only three that you could pin but there's a lot of information. And um, yeah there's lots and lots of options in this game. So some of the things that I sort of didn't like about the game, um, it wasn't really obvious where you're supposed to go with some of the missions. You'll see by that kind of middle in, uh, pin there, it gives you lots of clues, but there, in the beta at least there was the, there was no kind of marker there, or you had to get fairly close um, to get a marker to appear. Now I kind of get why they've done that. Um, they want you to investigate the map, but I, I've got to say it just wastes a lot, a lot of time um, with your gameplay trying to figure out where the heggy should be. And anyway, I, I I didn't quite like that. I think that needs to be tweaked. Um, I think there's far too many options for everything. And again, I I, I kind of get it. I get why they've done it. And there's there's about maybe two or three different ways of doing the same thing. And it, obviously it's all about kind of tweaking it to the way you want to play the game, which I kind of like, but it, I think there's just far too many options in this game for me personally. Um, the auto-collect feature when you're trying to pick things up is, yeah, is a bit bugged. It needs to have a little bit of work done it, on it, especially when uh, you come across some of those intel packs. And, and there's maybe, as I have done in the past, where there's a bike or various things around, trying to get to the specific item you want is a, can be a little bit difficult at times. Um, so they need to work on that a little bit. Um, I'm not sure what this water refill business is about. Um, I haven't showed it in this video, but it's, yeah, there's, I don't get why you need to refill your water to keep your stamina up, and, yeah, um, apart from that, guys, um, yeah, it, it, I enjoyed the beta, I, after I kind of got, I was able to figure out how the game worked, i got to be honest, the day one when I played and when I streamed at the, I got quite frustrated with this game to start with. When I came back the day after and played it a little bit more and, and understood the mechanics and stuff, I had a much more um, enjoyable time and it was much more pleasant for me to to um, get into the into the, the immersion. Uh, but it did take me probably a good four or five hours to figure out what was going on and how what playstyle I needed to adopt. And I think that's pretty pretty standard for any new game when you're um, when you're trying to work it out what is a bit disappointing for me is i played ghost recon wildlands and puff played a lot of hours into that game so i would have thought it would have been fairly intuitive and i could just get straight back in it instead of having to spend all that time trying to figure things out however that was my experience as far as game rating goes at this point with the beta and given please please remember this is a beta I would only give this a 2 out of 5 at this point. 
I can see this is going to get very, very repetitive very, very quickly. Um, and I think they need to work on the storyline a little bit more. Personally, for me, you may love it. And um, if you do, that's, that's all well and good. But I know that that was my experience with Ghost Recon Wildlands. It got very repetitive very quickly. And I can't see that they've done anything to change that in this game but it is a nice little open world shooter it might be for you i'm just saying that personally i'll probably if it comes on sale i'll probably buy it but at this point um, i can't see me um buying it um to play on the channel and so that's the second game review done, Ghost Recon Breakpoint. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, a uh, like rating is always appreciated down below. It really does help the channel, guys. I'd love to hear your feedback and your comments on how you feel about this game and any of the other uh, in the series in, in general. Thanks for joining us on the channel, and we'll catch you next time on Gaming for XP. See ya! back to the channel welcome back to game reviews i hope you're well today and um, we're going to uh, yeah, yeah, yeah.